Welcome back guys. So in the previous episode, we learned about how to go ahead and create a custom server using Express. We will now learn how to create a custom endpoint using Express. So in the previous video, we learned about uh, that we can display all the WordPress posts over here and then we can click on any of the links and using this ID, we are actually fetching the single post uh, using get initial props uh, with the fetch method. Okay. So now you can see that currently we have ID is equal to 173 and it, it doesn't look good. It is not pretty permalink. So we need a pretty permalink. Probably we can show slash post slash the slug of the UR of the post rather than, uh, you know, showing just the ID, which is not very good if the user wants to share this URL with someone else on social link or something, right? So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is inside of our post link, which we are importing here. So what we are doing over here is we are looping through each item of the post and then we are using our post link component, passing the ID of the post, title of the post and inside of here we are pulling that information from props and we are sending the user to that particular ID and we are displaying the title uh, that we are passing uh, from into props like this. Okay. So what we can do is in next years we have something called as available. Okay. So what we can do is we can do slash post slash and over here we can do a slug. So we know that we have a slug available. Uh, you can see this one. So we have slug available. So we can pass slug also over here. So we can say slug is equal to um, we have item dot slug right awesome okay so since we are passing slug over here like this we can get hold of that from props so we can say props dot slug okay and now this should be available as slug let's have a look so go to go back to the home URL, the root URL, and if you click on this, sure enough, you can see now that uh, we have it available on Slug. My Slug is too long, but I'm sure your Slug is not going to be that long. It's just be a short one. But you can see now we have a clean URL, and user can just do a copy paste, and it looks much better compared to passing an ID. Okay, awesome. But so then you would be wondering why do I need to create a custom endpoint? using express i mean my job is done right i can just use as and just get a pretty permalink because express is already uh, next is already providing me that so why do i actually need to create a custom endpoint i'll tell you why let's let me show you some magic let's refresh the page oops what just happened you can see we get a 404 page but why would that be I mean, we have a link available. We can say that, uh, go to this post. Uh, whenever the user hits this, you know, it should be as slash post. So why are we getting 404 page? I'll think about it for a moment. Okay. Well, the reason for this is because by default, Next.js is going to create a route for us with the name of the page that we define inside of pages. So since we have defined post.js, it has created a route for us on post.js on the server as well. However, on the server, we don't have this available, post slash post slug, or we could have just used p over here, and, and that would also mean the same thing, right? So if I go over here, so in case if you're getting confused with post and I just want to show you that this route is different than this one. Okay, so I click on this. Now refresh, you get 404. Okay, so we don't have this available on the server and that is why you are getting this. When you are navigating by clicking on the link, then 
you are able to get that is because it's handled by the front end but if you are doing a page refresh the page it's trying to fetch it from the server side and on server we don't have this available because on server we have slash post available okay so to resolve this all we can do is to create a custom endpoint okay so how do we do that we just go to our server.js and over here we can say server because that's what's available inside of the uh, from the express server.get so whenever the user tries to access uh, slash p slash uh, let's say slug okay because that's what that's what we have so it's a slug then it'll accept the callback request response and inside of this so we need to pull this slug out of this. So how do we do that? We already know that in a node, we can get that information using request.params.id. So over here is slug, so it'll be request.params.slug. So we can create a constant called query param. And we can pass slug like this. And say request.params.slug. And then you can say const, or we can just do app dot render, and it takes first parameter as request and response, and the next parameter will be the actual page. So actual page is post, right? So it'll be post, and then it takes the query parameters as the next one, so that it passes this query parameter to your component okay now the problem is that we also need an id the uh, id of the post along with the slug because remember in the post we want the id the post id and not the slug so how do we do that how do we also pass the id in the clean url so for that what we need to do is we go over here and along with the slug we can just add it right here. So we can say we can say dash and then props. We can say dash and then we can say props dot id. Okay, and now we need to pull this out. We need to break this so our slug will be like if it's hello world uh, and the post id then it'll be hello dash world dash 22 if the post id is 22. so we need to pull that off so how do we pull that off so we go over here inside of server and remember we want to pass not the slug but the post id so we create that on top we'll say post id is equal to so we have the slug available inside of request dot params dot slug dot split so we have a split method available and I want to split that by the dash and then I want to pop out the last item okay from the array so this is going to give me post ID so I want to show that to you how that works so if you go and do an inspect element and if you say const my string is equal to let's say we have a post hello world slash the post id is 22 so this is how we are passing right this is exactly how we are passing okay so post slug dash the id so we, if we have it like this then we can say my string dot split I want to split it by the dash which is this and then I want to get the last so what is going to give me is going to give me this array right so I want to go ahead and get the last item so if I do pop function it'll give me 22 out of that but that's not enough it's a string so I want it in in the uh, integer format right so how do we get that so we can just do parsent so since we already have the logic in place I can just wrap it inside of parse int and it's going to go ahead and give me an integer there 
So this gives me post ID. I can pass post ID over here. And then because you are returning this query params, that will now be, a, be available inside of my uh, post page over here. So we can get that information in the query. Okay, so now let's have a look. If we go back to our project, if we do refresh, um, query is not defined. Okay, we don't need that. Let's have a look. Okay, we just had to go back and come back again. That's all. So now we have the post ID available and we have the post inside of it. You can see all of the information. So, okay, we just had to restart the server because we made changes into our server.js. Now if I refresh, it works. Go back, click on this one. You can see we are passing the uh, slug with the ID like this. So we now have browser API being showed. Refresh the page, it works, awesome. So just to recap what we did out here, guys. Uh, let's close everything and let me give you a recap, okay? So inside of the index.js, what we're doing is we are fetching all of the posts from the uh, WordPress site and then we are looping through each item of the post because whatever you return from the get initial prop is available as props to your uh, component and now we are looping through it and then passing the ID slug and the title to our component which is post link inside of the post link we are using the link element to create a link for each item in the post and we are going to create the link with the name of the title and the HRFS post with an ID of this okay and at the same time we are saying it as which means that when the user goes ahead and go on to this URL actually show this URL on the URL bar okay and we are passing post slug and the ID okay so what happens is that when the user clicks on this it actually gets shown like this okay and then inside of the post when he clicks on this URL basically when he clicks on this link so let's go back okay so if he clicks on one of these links like this it actually goes to the post page and we've already created a post page right here and over here what we're doing is we are saying that go ahead and get the ID from the query okay so inside of the query on the client side instead of the query ID we have the ID available so it's pulling the ID out of that because that's available inside of context and accessing the single post with the ID and then responding with the single post and that single post is given to the post uh, component and we are rendering the title of it okay this happens client side but if it's a server side if we refresh the page what's going to happen is that it's going to go ahead and access this url which is slash p slash the slug and then dash the id so what's going to happen is going to go to our custom endpoint which is the server.js inside of server.js we've already defined a custom endpoint on this and we are pulling the slug out of it splitting it and getting just the id out of it and then sending the id in the query parameters when you send the id in the query parameter that would be available to your post uh, component inside of get initial props as context.query.id and then we are fetching the id returning the post it's available over here to your component and that's how it's rendered okay so now that means we are handling this both client side as well as server side so if we refresh the page it is actually accessed server side and if you want to see that that's actually true you can do if process dot browser console log true or you can just console process dot browser process dot browser and you can uh, say that is browser so what will happen is that if uh, the component if this is not rendered uh, server side if it is rendered client side this will be true if it is rendered server side this will be false so have a look so now if you go ahead and refresh the page look what happens it says is browser is false and now when it gets rendered that's when it becomes true so that you won't be able to see over here because this is shown server side you will have to look at the console over here 
okay so why it's not showing that because it is not rendered client side so if you want to see client side then go back click on one of these and now you can see that is browser that means it's coming by the client side so that gives you an indication as to how this flow is working all right guys i hope you did like the video it was a little difficult to understand but i've you know done my best to make you understand that if you still have any questions you can leave inside of the comment if you did like the video please give a thumbs up and if you have any questions you can always ask me and please do subscribe to my channel uh, for more content if you have any special requests you can mention that in the comments as well all right guys see you then uh, please do follow me on twitter my twitter handle is imran hcm take care guys bye bye